So we just finished creating a reference from a data shortcut and we promoted our existing grade surface. Currently I'm in the O3 pond grading object drawing within your tutorials folder. And if you go into your tool space, expand the surfaces, you can see we have our existing grade surface and it's not attached to our data shortcuts because there is no longer like that little arrow, that little check mark. So we're, we've promoted that surface. And now I'm looking at a drawing that has our topo and then just a polyline that I drew in on the lowest side of the site. I kind of more or less drew this pond right within this region here, within this contour, within the 60 contour. But what we're going to do with this is we're going to create what's known as a civil 3D grading object. We're going to use the grading object tools in order to effectively create consistent slopes and tie-ins to our existing grade surface. So we're going to be focusing on that aspect and then afterwards we're going to be cutting a section of our pond so we can actually see how it ties into our existing grade surface. So let's go ahead and start that. Currently, again, I'm in the O3 pond grading object drawing within your tutorials folder. And what I'd like to do first is I'd like to go into my sites within my tool space. Now sites is an interesting thing because the way that I classify sites is with a lot of what's known as feature lines that Civil 3D uses to create grading objects. With sites, I can pretty much encaps encapsulate all of my feature lines for a, a particular area that I'm grading within a particular site. Now, if I wanted to grade, say, uh, a parking lot separately, and I don't want the feature lines from my pond to affect my parking lot design, then I would create a separate site. It's just the, the way that I, I typically work. There, there might be better ways of, of being able to do this, but that's the way that I organize that in my mind. That's the way that I organize sites in my mind. So let's right click and select new. For a name, I'm gonna call this pond. I'm gonna turn my caps lock on. Pond site. Make sure your 3D geometry is set and your mid ordinate distance so that we can go around curves is set to 0.1. So that will make our, uh, our contours look nice. Go ahead and click OK. And now we have a pond site. Next, we're going to create a grading group. And the way that we do that is we can go up into our home tab then create design, then the grading drop down. And we're, we're going to create a grading group. This grading group is going to be called, you guessed it, Pond Grading Group. I'm going to leave everything else at its default, so I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to go back into that drop down and go into Grading Creation Tools. We get our little uh, grading creation tools toolbar. And you can see that we're currently set to the pond grading group. And you can set that with that with this button right here, just like we did before. So that's all set up. We want to target our existing grade surface. So we can click on this button, existing grade surface, then click OK. And now, what we can do is we can make sure that we've got the proper criteria assigned to our grading. Now we've got a bunch of different criteria here. I want to, just to make this simple as possible, what we're going to do is we're going to create a pond with a six foot bottom. And that pond is going to be graded to that bottom on a four on one slope. Typically with a pond, if you don't want to have a fence surrounding your pond, then you want to keep your grade roughly at about four on one. If you go too steep with it, like a three on one, then you have to have a fence typically around your entire pond. And we want to kind of avoid that. 
So we're going to grade to an elevation. We're going to grade to an elevation of 57. However, in order to actually do any kind of grading, you need to have a feature line to grade from. And right now, we have this set as a polyline. So this needs to be converted into a feature line. But what we'll, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and escape out of this. We'll continue with our process within the Grading uh, Creation Tools toolbar. Let's go ahead and click this button to create a grading. And we can select our polyline currently. And now Civil 3D automatically knows that we need to create a feature line. This is going to go within our pond site. And then for the style, we're going to leave that alone. Everything else we're going to leave at its defaults with the exception of assign elevations and click OK. Now the elevation of the pond, remember how we were going around this pond and it was roughly at around 60, I believe. We're going to go with a three foot top. So we're going to stick with 63. That's going to be the top of our berm. So we'll click OK. And now Civil 3D is asking us within the command line, select the grading side. We want to grade in towards our bottom. So we're going to pick the inside of our pond, apply to the entire length. Yes, we do. We want to have an entire length graded on to a four on one slope. So we'll go ahead and press enter for yes. Elevation, we want it to be 57. Cut format, we're going to keep it at slope. The cut slope, rather than two on one, we don't want something that steep. We want to go four colon on one. Press enter. The fill format, we're going to keep that at slope. The fill slope, we're going to change two on one to four on one. Press enter once more, and there you have it. Then press enter to escape. Oops, press escape to get out of the command and we have our pond bottom right here but we're not finished just yet we have to create what's known as a civil 3d infill because since the pond bottom is essentially a flat surface we need to create an infill in order to let civil 3d know that that's just a flat surface bottom so let's do that let's go into this drop down and select create infill Click this area, it's automatically, it can already find it. Click this and then press enter to escape the command. And you can see that this is a grading because it has this little triangle or this little diamond assigned to it. You can also see that with this part of the grading as well. It's got a little diamond right here. So we have our pond bottom However, later on, we're going to be adjusting that bottom for a particular reason, and I'll show you that in the future. But we're going to continue to grade the top of our berm. Now, the top of our berm is going to be about five feet wide, so we need to offset the top area, which is set at 63 currently. We have to offset this five feet at the same elevation. So the way that we accomplish that, let's go ahead and exit out of this. We'll go ahead and select our feature line. We get our contextual menu. Then we're going to edit the, the geometry. Click this button to, for a stepped offset. Select that. It says to specify offset distance. We want to go with five feet. Five foot wide berm. Specify the side. We're going to select the outside of our pond. And the elevation difference, we don't want any elevation difference. So we're going to keep that at zero. Press enter. And remember, since this is a flat surface, we're not done with creating our, our grading just yet. In fact, we need to convert that top into a grading. So what do we do? We go into one of our gradings. We're going to actually click the home, go into grading, grading creation tools, 
And then again, actually I can escape out of this. We don't need to do that. Click this drop down, create infill. And then it highlights the top of our berm, which is at 63. And there you have it. Press enter to accept the command. And you can see that right now that the top of our berm is now a grading. And lastly, what we'll do is we need to grade down from our berm down to our existing grade surface. So the way that we do that is we're going to change our grading criteria to grade to surface. We're letting Civil 3D know that we're tying into our existing grade surface. We're going to select this drop down. We're going to create a grading once more and then select this feature line. Select the grading side. We're going to select this side. Grade the, the entire length. Yes. Press enter. Then for slope, press enter to accept that. We're going to go four on one once more. Then press enter. Accept slope. So press enter once more. We're going four on one. Then press enter. And there you have it. Beautiful, isn't it? So after we've created our pond grading group, next we need to create a surface that is its own pond surface. Now how do we go about accomplishing that? We can go into our grading groups within our tool space, go into our pond grading, right click, select properties, and we're going to check this box for automatic oops for automatic surface creation it's going to create a surface for our pond we're going to accept the defaults click OK and then click OK once more and now we have all of our contours showing within our pond however what's all this stuff I thought that we had a flat bottom it doesn't appear that we have a flat bottom how do we how do we fix this? Because this looks like an error on Civil 3D's part. Well, the way that we can fix this is we can go and select this diamond for our grading. And remember, we were using the grading criteria to grade down to a specific elevation. Well, right now, Civil 3D is trying to grade down to 57, but something's get, getting a little wonky. So the way to fix this is to select that diamond, go into edit grading, and the elevation instead of 57, let's go with 56.999. Then press enter. Press enter once more, four on one, accept that. Slope, accept that. Four on one, that's good. And then that clears all of those contours very nicely. So it's something that's a little bit it can be a little bit confusing, you know, when you're first starting out in Civil 3D. How come, you know, I set it to the right elevation, but how come it isn't, you know, showing my, my contours properly? Well, that's the way that you, you go about fixing it.